Imagine if you could create a to-do list that was entirely customized to exactly your specifications. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. And we're going to take it one step further and we're going to create recurring tasks that automatically update on a schedule that you determine. And we're going to be using the softwares of Airtable and Zapier to do this. And yes, they both have paid versions, but the best part of all of this is the stuff we're doing in this video is going to be entirely on their free plans. So if that's of interest to you, let's jump on in. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I help people unlock the full potential of Airtable and Zapier so that they can get organized and automated and wind up saving time and money. In this video, we're going to be jumping on into these two softwares. So without further ado, let's get in there. We've got uh, Airtable set up here, and this is a very simple Airtable base. Uh, you'll see that we only have six fields. You can make this as complicated as you want. This, honestly, the task list or the task table is one of those tables that goes along with pretty much every base that we help with our client or we help our clients with. And on the task list, this is really where you're just tracking those different things that you need to make sure get taken care of on either a regular basis or those one-off you know, projects or tasks. So very common layout is something like this. We've got the task name. Uh, we also have a category for that task. Usually this is going to be a single select drop down, and you're going to have these different options, right? So in this case, we've got, you know, just marketing operations finance. Of course, you're going to have a due date. So, you know, when is this task, you know, required? Uh, and then, of course, a person in charge as well. This is super helpful when you've got those bigger teams uh, and you're trying to track all of these different things across you know, multiple departments or what have you. Uh, you know, quick uh, thing to keep in mind is when you add someone, uh, a user to Airtable in the collaborator field, they're going to receive a notification. So this is a great way to stay connected. Uh, and very common that we have some sort of notes where we're taking notes on that particular task. And then, of course, we've got a complete checkbox. One thing to note here is we've got a couple different views set up. We've got the all tasks view and there's, you know, this is kind of your standard, you know, no filter, no grouping, uh, nothing fancy going on here. And then if we jump into the current tasks, which is the one we were on, we have these grouped by date. That way it's easy to see what's up and coming and what we need to get ready for next. And then even better, we have a filter set up where we're removing anything that's been checkboxed. So if we complete a task, it's removed from the view and we no longer have to uh, be, have our view cluttered with all of those things that we've already knocked out, right? The good part is, of course, we're not actually deleting this data. It still lives in that all tasks table, as you see right here. All right, so going back, we have one other view here, and that is the upcoming tasks view. And in this case, we're putting this on a calendar view. So this is just set up to organize these uh, records by their due date. And you can really quickly and easily get, you know, perhaps a, a different visualization of these things. Let's say, for example, uh, you didn't want this due date on the 17th. You realize, oh, I didn't know that was a weekend. You can just drag it on over, update that record, and now it will be due on Monday. And of course, because this is uh, the same table, all of these views have interrelated uh, data. So as you make that change in one place, it is made in all places. All right, so that's great. This is a great way to set up a nice uh, you know, task or to-do list uh, table inside of Airtable. But let's get to the good part, and this is how we set up those recurring tasks using Zapier. So jumping into Zapier, this is a two-step zap, which is available on their free plan. So the first step of that zap is we are selecting the scheduler uh, trigger. And so in order to do this, uh, when you're going through the different apps that you might want to connect for your zap, uh, just find the schedule by Zapier here and make this selection. And then when you get to the next step, it's going to ask you, you have four different options. How often do you want this to trigger? Either daily, weekly, monthly, or hourly. So in this case, I'm going to pick a monthly thing. Let's suppose we had um, payroll that triggered every 10th of the month, for example. We set a, set a time of day that you want this to trigger, and that's it. We, you can uh, test this step here, but it's kind of redundant because it's always going to work. It's a trigger, uh, so not much needed here. This is just going to be pulling in the current date or time. So we're going to move on now to the next step, and this is where we're going to create that record inside of Airtable. So we want to create the task with a category and a date due and the person in charge. So let's jump in and see how we might do that. 
We're going to go ahead and create a new record here once we've selected the right Airtable account. Then we're going to make sure that we have it connected to the right Airtable uh, account inside of Zapier. Once we've decided on the uh, base and table, in this case, we're going to the recurring tasks example, and we only have this one tasks table. But once we've determined that, then we're going to start filling out those different fields. Now, in some of these cases, we're going to pull in some metadata. And in other cases, we're going to be uh, accessing data specifically from Airtable. Now, in this particular automation, we don't have an existing Airtable record. So all of this data is essentially going to be hard coded with the exception of one metadata tag, which I'll go into for you. So the task name in this case is specific to the task we're creating. For this example, we're running payroll. So let's say run payroll. And now every time we run this task, that is going to be the name of the task that's created. We also have a day to do. And uh, this is going to be uh, the particular day that we've determined, right? In this case, uh, we have a meta tag that we can pull from Zapier. And that tag is zap underscore meta underscore human underscore now. I know this because I'm looking at zapier.com's uh, support page. To be honest with you, I can never remember exactly the syntax of this tag. So I always have to go here to uh, find that. But a quick Google search and you're on your way. So if we grab this little uh, meta tag here, we can go ahead and automatically put in the timestamp into Zapier. And you see that once we paste that, it says that we're going to pull the time that's generated when Zapier runs this task. Great. So now to person in charge. For the person in charge table, we're looking to fill it out with this collaborator. Now, quick side note, if you try to type in the person's name, this will not work. Uh, what you're looking for here is the email address of the collaborator field. And that is what's going to populate with the person's name. In this case, the Airtable account I'm using is my uh, professional email, which is gareth at garethpronovost.com. And so that is going to actually wind up pulling in my uh, Airtable account. And what category is this? Well, in this case, it is finance. Now, jump back into here, we have a single select field. We only need to have the uh, text of this field, and it will automatically assign it to that single select. So we have to make sure that we get that exactly right. And of course, finance is pretty easy to spell. Is it? It is. All right. And then is it complete or not? No, of course not. We want to create a new task. And so that's it. Let's go ahead and hit continue. And uh, we're going to go ahead and process this. We're going to send this test to Airtable and jump back into Airtable and see if it has been created. And sure enough, we've got a new task called Run Payroll. That's the name we gave it. Automatically applied to the finance category with a due date of today and a person in charge uh, that we denoted here. If we have any notes, we could add them. And once this is completed, we can mark it off. Now, you might say, wait, hold on, Gareth. We wanted to set this up for a schedule. And why is it that it just pulled in today? Well, the answer to that is we're just testing it with that data. But this Zap will only run on the schedule that you set it up for. And in that case, it will always pull in the current date and time uh, that it ran on. So in our case, we set it to run on the 10th, I believe. And so every 10th of the month, it will trigger and it'll pull in the, uh, the current date, which you know, the next occurrence of that would be February 10th. And that's it. Once that is turned on, it's going to recur and do this on a consistent basis. Now, one quick thing I want to leave you with before signing off here is there is a limitation to this. And it is if you're trying to build something that doesn't follow a very easy schedule, then this gets a bit more complicated. So for example, if you're on, let's say every other week schedule, this kind of breaks down because there's no way to say I want it every week, but every other week. And so the workaround for this is to actually build a, a, a recurring event in Google Calendar and then use a multi-step zap to uh, unlock that extra bit. And so then you're looking at the recurring event and using that as a trigger. Uh, this is a little bit more complicated, so we're not going to go much further into detail in it here, but uh, this should be a great start to get you set up with anything that occurs on a weekly, daily, hourly, or uh, monthly basis. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you want to see more content like this on Airtable, definitely subscribe to this channel and also swing on by my website. Uh, I'll include a link in the description below and check out all the different things that we've put together for you. In the meantime, 
Best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.